تفضل يا استاذ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يعني انا في الاول طبعا انا انا محمود السلايد شير كده ولا ايه الاخبار اه يا فندم في شير يا فندم دلوقتي بس فول سكرين بقى ساعات ما فول سكرين والله طب يبقى تمام كده يا استاذ تمام يا فندم تمام 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 يا استاذ تمام أنا طبعا في البداية يعني سعيد جدا بتواجدي مع قسم جراحة العظام في الطب بنها وأشكر الدعوة العزيزة من الأستاذ الدكتور محمد الأشهب على دعوتي مشاركة في هذا الكورس المحترم وجزيل التقدير والعرفان بتواجدي مع اثنين من عظماء جراحة العظام في مصر هي وأساتذتي أنا شخصيا والدكتور خميس الدكتور أسامة حجازي أنا يعني أدين ليهم بكل التقدير والمحبة والتعليم العالي وكل مش عارف يعني أشكرهم زي على محوم الفرصة أن أنا أكون متواجد معكم النهاردة يا دكتور خميس وحضرتك دكتور أسامة وقسم جراحة العظام في طب أنا بشكره مرة تانية طبعا لزمائنا الأعزاء وإخواتنا إحنا هنتكلم على حاجة من الكومن كونجينيتال لور لمب ديفورمتز اللي هي الكلافوت في انتروداكشن سريعة كده على دايما دايما بحاطين لنا ايه هي الفانكشن اوف ذا فوت. Usually it gives a base for support and weight distribution. It acts as rigid lever to push off. It absorbs it and permits the food to conform to changing train. This is the function of the food اللي ربنا سبحانه وتعالى عملها لنا وبالتالي اهم حاجه ان احنا دايما نوصل اي فود ديفورمتي الى ان هي تكون Plenty great functional food as much as we can, as we know in the fabric, 100% that Rabbina Subhanahu wa Taala. The most important joint, the real for the congenital club foot, is the subtalar joint, or the talocalcaneal articulation. It is not an isolated joint, as we know from the anatomy. It is a part of the talocalcaneal navicular articulation, and usually its main function is conversion of the tibia rotation to the forefoot during. Supination and pronation, and this is what happened during supination and pronation. During supination, we have three complex uh, motions: adduction along the vertical axis, the leg, inversion along the longitudinal axis of the foot, and the plantar flexion along the coronal axis. And during pronation, the opposite will take place. Actually. We should know the, that the subtalar axis is directed from downward, upward, and medial. And the low isthmal x is ray inclination بتاعتها. هنلاقي إن هي حوالي بتincline up زي في figure A حوالي 42 درجة وهت incline medially 16 درجة بس. أكثر تندن لي أهمية في حكاية الكلاب فوت هو تيبيالس بوستيريو تندن. وكنا زمان في الاناتومي واخدين ان هو انسرتد ان اول ذا تارسال بونز اكسبت ذا تيلس وبالتالي هو هاز ا فيري امبورتنت رول فور ستابيلايزيشن اوف ذا تيلو نافيكولار جاينت ديورينج هيل سترايك اند جيف سبورت فيري سترونج تو ذا ميديال لونجيتودينال ارش اند اف ذيس فانكشن اوكير تو ات ات ويل ريزالت ان وات وي كول اكواير فلات This, as regards the very important anatomical relationship to the club foot, should be put in mind in addition to other anatomical landmarks. Also, you should put in mind that there is a developmental changes in the child at birth with growth. So, if you see a baby at birth with normal foot, it has it is usually in slight dorsiflexion and eversion. It is normal, and active and passive plant dorsiflexion. Reach to up to 50 degree, and if accidentally, though not intentionally, do an X-ray for him, we will see the optic centers of calcaneus, talus, and cuboid. After growth one one year, the sole will develop be flat, and this is due to the position of the pad, and not due to actually the deformity of bulgus or flat feet, and the foot is everted and laterally rotated. What happened in the second year? The fat developed in the first year will disappear and will the end will be replaced by arches. And the inversion and lateral rotation appearance will be less. The active and passive dorsiflexion of the plantar flexion reached to 50 degree and dorsiflexion reached to up to 30. 
And if you do an X-ray, we'll see we'll see the specific centers of calcaneus, salus, euboid, and cuneiform. After that, after three years plus, plant reflection, dorsiflexion, plant reflection is stationary 50, dorsiflexion up to 25 to 30, and all the specific centers of the foot will appear, including in addition, calcaneus, talus, cuboid, and cuneiform, the second year, the appearance of specific centers of the molecular bone. This is the commonest or the common food deformities we much we may uh, uh, face uh, with a baby, reach from club foot, metars, adductors, or ski foot, or vertical talus. But uh, we concern today of only club foot, and we should put here only the metatarsus adductus, as it is one part of the deformity present in the club foot and should be differentiated from the club foot. It is common and considered as the most common food deformity in child. Actually, it occurs in 50% of cases bilaterally. And don't forget, either in the metatarsus adductus or the club foot, you should examine the hips and you should evaluate all the baby for other associated congenital anomalies. X-rays not necessary to be done in such cases. The metatarsus adductus classified according to this uh, axis from the center of the heel, and if the foot is in oriented vertically, the axis will pass in the second web space. According to its passage, third web, third uh, two, or third web space, or beyond, it, is class it was classified accordingly into mild or moderate or severe case. What is the aim of classification of such a deformity? Number one, to do how to treat this case. Number two, to explain to the peer what is the prognosis of such a condition and what is the future of this deformity. And this is the shape of such a deformity, mild or moderate or severe, and maybe in severe cases, we do an X-ray to see the deviation of all metatarsal bone to the medial side. Accordingly, according to this classification, mild form is maybe resolved spontaneously or passive stretching exercise, and moderate may need serial stretching and serial casting, and severe cases need serial casting, and rarely it may be needed, need surgical intervention. This is for uh, the resistant, the uh, algorithm for treatment, mild deformity will resolve, Serious stretching casting will be needed in moderate to severe cases till full correction and then maintenance of this correction by nice plants and then medical shoes till specific age. But if the condition is neglected or current or relapsed or received treatment and return back, if the age of the child was two to four years, we advised, it is, was advised to do tarsal tars capsulotomy up to four years age and bony operation only after the age of four years. Don't do bony operation up before age of four. This is the shape of dome-shaped osteotomy with at metatarsal basis and the bony correction of neglected or residual metatarsal abductus through two incisions of the dorsum of the foot and fully corrected and maintained ski wires removed after two months. Another operation is to elongate the medial uh, side of the foot and shorten the lateral by wedge of the cuboid and insertion it in the wedge, uh, open wedge of the navicular bone. Now we come to our uh, title is the congenital club foot. Uh, club foot is, uh, why, why is this called talibus? Talibus is uh, a Latin word called tali, talibus. It is two parts. Tali is from the ankle and base of the foot and combined is it is a, it is a deformity of the foot and the ankle joint. Uh, usually it's seen in uh, age uh, one to uh, per thousand leaf verses. Bilaterally in 50% of cases, the main instance is more common than in females and positive family history present in 10 to 25% of cases. 
theories to develop such is it the bony problem and secondary soft tissue contracture take place or the opposite. But the primary germ plasma defect is the main theory in the, which occurred in the talus. And this called, causes continued plantar flexion and the inversion of the talus. And secondary soft tissue changes and the construction take place. This one theory. But another one demonstrated that the primary problem is a soft tissue abnormality. And the second bony change will take place and result in this. Don't forget that the many, many diseases or syndromes associated with such a condition. So every patient who is club foot presenting with, because it is the apparent, only apparent deformity, you should exa examine the baby for other con uh, associated congenital anomalies. What are the components of such a deformity? We have an equinus take place at the ankle joint, varus at the subtalar joint, adduction at the forefoot, supination at subtalar, and in severe cases, and this is the main principle of Ponsetti manipulation, is the cavus with a depressed or plantar flexed ferrous metatarsal ray. And this is the shape of the cave or the cavus and uh, adduction for foot, varus and equines. The muscles contracted in such a deformity I, in the cavus are the muscles contracted and responsible for such a deformity as presented here is the type in are the intrinsics, flexor halus longus, flexor pectoral longus. The muscles contracted during a, in abduction are tight tibialis posterior mainly. The varus is due to tight tendo achilles, tibialis posterior and tibialis anterior. And the main component of the causing equinus deformity is the severe tightness and the malinsertion of the tendo achilles. And this uh, table demonstrating what are the strong muscles, uh, not weak, weak is not in the idiopathic type. It is imbalance between both the strong and weak muscles. What about the bony deformity take place in such a deformity? Actually, the tailor neck is deviated medially and the plantar, and the plantar flexor. And the calcaneus goes into varus and dated around the talus. Navicular and cuboid are displaced medially. The telocalcaneal joint is, in such cases, is severely tight. And if during correction, what are the elements or the pathological elements that prevent its realignment? They are the calcaneofibular ligament, the superior perineary tenaculum, the peroneal tendon sheaths, and the posterior telocalcaneal ligament. And this to summarize and uh, demonstrate that the elements of deformity presented on the medial side, the superior side, and on the lateral side, as shown in these figures. Many classifications are uh, presented the yes. types, and the simplest one is yeah. to call it is cultural or positional one, but the more uh, specific is to uh, describe it I either fixed or a rigid type. But in general, the flexible foot is the correctable one without surgery. And the resistant one actually need surgical release. On Seti 1963 put his classification system according to the ankle dorsiflexion movement and the deformed veil virus. The degree of for foot supination and the associated association of the tibial torsion and put this table to demonstrate the result of the treatment of his technique and not the clinical con and not the uh, uh, condition of the baby at presentation. Accordingly, either result will be good or ex accepted or the, it will give a poor result when, according to this ankle dorsiflexion flexion degree, heel virus degree, adduction of the forefoot and tibial torsion. Later on, Harold gives a more simple classification of such a deformity. 
and according to the degree of correction of the deformity by manipulation at his clinic, if the foot could heal the at or beyond the neutral position, it is a great one. If it is reached to up to fix it, remaining equines or plus or and and or varies less than degree, uh, 20 degree, it is grade two. And if it is fixed with uh, residual grade of equinus and or varus more than 20 degrees, it will be grade three. Pirani uh, classification developed 1998, and according to this uh, criteria, which will be uh, depend on it on the clinical evaluation of such a condition, and we will see. And uh, this criteria involving what we'll see in inspection, palpation, and movement of such foot. And accordingly, we advised to examine the child from the front from the back and from the medial side of the foot, he will be demonstrate all these elements of the form. So we will see this foot, we should comment on the curvature of the lateral border of the foot associated with medial crease. As we know, there is no medial crease normally, but its appearance uh, graduate for the severity of the adduction of the forefoot. Also, we should uh, look from the behind to the presence of the posterior crease, which is normally not present. And in equinus deformity, it will be apparent. Then shift to palpation. We palpate from the medial side, the gap between the malleola, median malleolus and the navicular. We palpate on the lateral dorsolateral aspect of the foot for the tailor head. We palpate from the posterior for emptiness of the heel and the distance between the tendo Achilles and the lateral malleolus. Then we move to movement for, the, for evaluation of the rigidity of the equine, adduction, and the long flexor contracture of the two and big, uh, uh, big toe and other toes. And returning back to Birani, this what what's happened, these all elements which we will uh, 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 examine during evaluation of the baby and put one zero or half or one scoring and to decide which type of the which grade of the deformity is pressure. Now, when we were the residents, uh, our professors told us that Talibas is not an x ray foot uh, cases. We asked uh, why we not we will not do an x ray for a uh, club foot, but. Uh, uh, reviewing the literature, it is very important, not for diagnosis. Trap foot is a clinical diagnosis problem. But the x-ray is uh, done to with the progress of the treatment and if a complication takes place during or after treatment during follow-up. When it should, it is now, it is mandatory to do it during evaluation of each case. And it should be uh, in a non ampulatory child and the foot should be put in fully and maximally corrected position as much as we can to, the, to uh, remove the soft tissue element for evaluation of the angles of the foot, which we'll see. What we'll see in the X-ray. We have three main lines. The telocalcinia, sorry, three main axes. Telocalcinia axis in the anthroposterior view. And this demonstrating the degree of the virus or valgus here. The lateral telocalcinia axis, it is done for the demonstration of the equinus deformity. And the axis between the talus and first metatarsal ray, that's for the evaluation of grade of adduction of the four foot. So, the intergraph or X-ray findings are correlating well with the clinical appearance, as I said shortly, for the deformity associated. And this is an X-ray is old before the 
<تصفيق> تكنولوجي ادمنستريشن اكس راي اون الفانوس وكنا بنرسمها بال بالقلم الفلومصر والمسطره قبل ما تظهر بقى الخطوط اللي بتتعمل دلوقتي بالكمبيوتر واحنا قاعدين. Now, we shift to very important title is the treatment of such a problem. The treatment consisted of manipulation and we should know how frequently we do this manipulation technique and the after manipulation we maintain this correction by plaster of Paris or adhesive strapping or whatever and after reaching to full correction of the foot we should maintain what we will re what we will reach by or sources and medical shoes till specific age and time this is the traditional technique we are we are treating abduction of the four foot so we must put in abduction we are treating equinus we should correct by dorsiflexion and we are treating the associated tibial torsion we should be de rotation but serial manipulation described by ponsetti is trend is now uh, give us the trend to be far away from surgical intervention and i uh, read uh, read as many papers that described uh, we can use ponsetti technique in not presenting the idiopathic or primary presenting trap foot but either in recurrent or relapsed conditions and uh, ponsetti described his results up to 90 percent of success he described two phases treatment and maintenance and this principle as to treat as early as possible and you should be treat the baby with very gentle manipulation and change of cost every week and we should put in mind that the principle of correction according to the deformity elements not all at the same time you should correct first before the caves with abduction and the virus and after full correction we shift to correction of the hind foot this to avoid the correction from the abnormal location and the tarsal and the tarsal joint which will result in atrogenic complication which is a rocker bottom deformity hicks described in 15, uh, 1950s that's what we told the pronation twist uh, the foot is presenting in supination so by logic we should put the foot in to, uh, to do for her a pronation twist for correction but pronation will increase the plantar flexion of the first metatarsal which is already in plantar flexion and this will result in more cavus deformity and the more difficulty in correction of the deformity so must must as we said inversion or uh, supination with uh, cavus with adduction of the hind foot because tarsal joints are all are mechanically interdependent this is the principle we should put your thumb of the, the right foot on the head of the talus and you uh, catch the first or the foot and uh, increasing or correction of the adduction and virus of the foot in supination first time to correct first the cavus and push the dorsal the abduct, abducted foot toward the abduction at the same time we put the heel virus into valgus this continued at least four times uh, every week according to the city uh, five casting maximum to uh, give the period for correction of the action and virus of the heel. And this, the principle, you see in the up figures that the foot in the virus, the cavus, and correct the adduction in supination to reach the foot cavus to normal position. During this, we correct the adduction of the four foot and the heel virus. Why? Cavus, we know, is due to pronation of the forefoot in relation to the hind foot. This is the, what we know. So, cavus to be, uh, require only supination to achieve normal longitudinal arch of the foot. 
So the forefoot supinated to the extent that the plantar surface of the foot reveals normal appearing arch as we see in this figure. In manipulation consists of abduction forefoot, pelvis, the stabilized tailor head, and we should locate the tailor head by clinically before we start any manipulation. And we repeat again, we correct all the deformity elements except equinus simultaneously. Next, by adapting the foot in supination and the hold it with gentle pressure 60 seconds and then release the lateral motion of the navicular and of the calcaneus increase every time we correct this deformity, but don't forget never pronate the foot. And this after manipulation, he put his cotton and continuing the cast, as we see in this figure, he started from the below knee and then above knee, leaving part of the cast under the toes to prevent the contraction of the flexors and the, to, uh, remove part in the dorsum of the toes to give the baby uh, uh, the chance to do an active extension or full extension of the toes. And this is the steps of manipulation, then application of the cotton, and then completing the cast above the knee. And we note that in the last figure downward, the right is the foot is in full supination. This is the shape of the cast after each visit. We know we each cast show improvement, but abduction and birth, the first cast shows the correction of the caves. Second to fourth casting show correction of the abduction and virus. Then the remaining deformity is the equinus deformity. Either we continue manipulation and the correction of the equinus by manipulation. <laughs> this one of the print, which is not wrong, but Ponsetti described that we can do at outpatient clinic fair continuous tenotomy. Did a complete cut of the tendon at its mid substance between the musculoskeletal junction and the insertion into the calcaneus. After that, he continued the cast for one, four, uh, two to four times till full correction. But when to do cor uh, eh, 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 when to decide to do this tenotomy? When when the anterior calcaneus can be abducted fully because if you start to do correction of the equinus and the anterior calcaneus is not abducted fully, we, do, we will do crushing of the talus against the undersurface of the tibia. And this is very important. You must do poor correction of the abduction and the virus of the heel to avoid crushing of the talus between the calcaneus and the tibia. Then we will maintain in the Dennis Brown or the also ankle foot or so this present in marking according to your experience and your favorites. So the press should be worn after full correction, full day for first three months after last removal. Then the child wear is the press for 12 hours at night, two, four hours in the middle of the day means we reach up to 16 hours per day wearing the orthosis. And after walking, we shift the orthosis at night and the medical shoes during the day. And this will be instructed for the parents till the age of four years of age. But the child should be follow up regularly till the age of the school, which is about six years in our country. Sometimes after correction, the child walk with, uh, during strike gateways, the foot is supinated and equines. But at age two, four years, we may need for this procedure with tibialis anterior transfer to correct this supinated and equines. So what is the expectation of such line of treatments, whether surgical or conservative in club food and should be put in mind to describe to the parents? Because if the child has only unilateral food deformity, 
you should uh, uh, describe to the parent that there will be difference in the length of the foot with gross. But the whole lower limb length, there is no discrepancy. Also, the circumference of the leg may be or may not, may be smaller than the normal side. Even in bilateral cases, this discrepancy may be present, but with different grades. And if the according to the degree of the deformity of the cleft of the foot. When to do surgery for such a deformity? If the child do not respond to conservative treatment by serial manipulation and casting, this is logic. We must shift to surgical treatment. And surgery actually aimed for the conservative treatment, as I said before, to reach to the maximum functional plantigrade foot. This is the aim. And equinus, if residual equinus, we can do tendo Achilles lengthening, isotinotomy, or Z plasty, or uh, uh, this is in described techniques. And this is the open Z plasty. And sometimes if associated abduction and virus of the heel, we may shift to post remedial release. When to do complete soft tissue release? If the fit is resistant and in young child, if during manipulation, as we said, and this food is severely deformed and an iatrogenic complication took place with you during manipulation, which is rocker bottom deformity, we should shift it to complete release. If the club food is associated with syndromes, if there is a delayed presentation of the child above one year with walking, we should shift to surgical treatment. The ideal age for complete soft tissue release is nine to 10 months of age because the child will be with fully weight bearing and walking. This is the principle, this is a prescribed uh, procedure, the Terco procedure, as we know from post remedial incision and this one of the uh, procedures or technique used for complete soft tissue release to release all elements of tissue con soft tissue contracture described in pathology and the reposition of the subtalar joint mainly the talus and calcaneus and restore the mechanical orientation of the talocalcaneal navicular joint this is one technique through post remedial incision this is another one described by carol through two incisions, one on the medial side and one posterolateral. And Cincinnati, which is a severely extensive sensile approach, which could be done with the child brawn. These all are uh, uh, surgical techniques aimed for complete soft tissue release, to release all soft tissue contracture and the reposition of the bone to achieve the plantigrade foot uh, correction. This is an x-ray before and after for the same baby. And this is another one treated conservatively with severe, uh, moderate to severe clafoot, the plaster of Paris. And this is during follow-up. And this is the final picture of the foot. So what about the resistant types? If the child presented to you after the age of five years, and presented only with metatarsus abductus. Here, there is no rule for conservative treatment. We should do metatarsal osteotomies. But if below four years, don't do open body operation. You must only capsulotomies and release of the capsule to correct the deformity. What about the hind foot virus? Either it is isolated or associated with other elements at age less than three years, we do modified McKay procedure, but later on, the wire osteotomy or during events according to presence of the virus in either the isolated or as a part of the complex deformity of the foot. As regards the equinus, if the child is young, Achilles tendon uh, lengthening and posterior capsulotomy is enough in mild to moderate cases and the child is young, but in severe deformity, and the older one, and near to skeletal maturity, we should do Lambernoidi procedures. If 
all elements of deformity, adduction, virus, caves, and poor foot supination are present, and the child has age more than 10 years, may, may be shifted to a complex or uh, uh, very ugly, I don't like it, procedure which is triple arthrodesis to achieve plantigrade functional food, not correct cosmetic appearance. This is one of the procedures for abduction of the four foot, either isolated or as part of the, uh, as part of the old uh, foot with lengthening of the lateral column and shortening, uh, uh, lengthening, sorry, of the median column and shortening of the lateral one by taking a cuboid uh, bone uh, uh, grafting or uh, wedge and put it in open wedge on the medial side to, um, to length the uh, medial border of the foot. This indicated mainly in older children at age of three to 10 years. Triple arthrodesis prefer to be more than 10 years and it is contraindicated in the foot with, with, uh, without uh, sensation because it is depend mainly for uh, fusion on the proprioceptive impulses from the foot of the brain. Another procedure, surgical procedure, which could be advised is telectomy. And as we learned from our great professors before, telectomy is mainly indicated in not idiopathic uh, club foot, but mainly in arthrogribotic foot deformities. And the, actually it is a salvage procedure and may be needed in arthrogribosis in younger age, but in age more eight to 10 years, Without uh, food sensation, it may be uh, help in correction of the deformity. Salvage procedure also with complex multiplanar craft food deformity is the multiplanar supramilar osteotomy, but it is not done isolated. It's done in associated with the food deformity to correct the tibial torsion and not the craft food. So, uh, as uh, our great professor likes Lizarov, gradual correction by ring fixator is still a great option for treatment of severely and fixed deformed cases. And this is for example, with a baby bilateral and one side of the height operated by the traditional post remedial release and the other side treated by Lizarov with gradual correction. And this is uh, the final uh, before the first one. And this is the final. The, don't forget that uh, I think that the side the treated surgically by post medial release and the, my reserve of sur uh, orthopedic surgeons, the colleagues, has uh, many get that in Nana altogether in the soft tissue will the skills of the release the uh, results uh, better on the ring fixator because we need training in the high level and we need people to export but this is one of the first things we did in the Fahim Shams and I will show you the video after a little bit if there is a time with Dr. Ezzan Dr. Muhammad I will tell you that the rules of the rule of the rule of the rule of the traditional treatment lines is better than the Lizarov This is another example with complete soft tissue release uh, one of the complication or uh, one of the most important type, uh, item is the compliance of the parents. Uh, you should ask the parents to be uh, regularly follow up for the baby. Because uh, if you do an operation like this, this is a very simple procedure done for this boy. He is treated conservatively and the little equinus and did tend to Achilles lensing by Z-plasty and disappeared. He will recur, return back to another one for tendo Achilles again, and this will result in infection and the ugly scar in the posterior aspect of the ankle and gives the surgeon very difficulty to co correct this foot. So the compliance of the parents and the regular and the really good relationship between the orthopedic surgeon and the parents to help this baby is a very important issue in treatment of such disorders. Uh, last uh, 
procedures in tibialis anterior occur in this problem. It is indicated in, uh, as I said before, in persistent virus and supination during uh, walking. And actually, it is done at age between three and five years and uh, with uh, uh, indicated also if there is a poor compliance for brace management and this uh, not occurred if the relationship is very this is a technique i will not go inside but this is a principle with scar three incision one on the side of uh, a transfer one of the reattachment of the tendon and the other side uh, we as, uh, as we see this is look to the figures to uh, taking the tibialis uh, anterior into the third cuneiform and sometimes uh, you need an x-ray image and inspire to locate the lateral uniform to actually uh, to be 100 percent transfer it to the very this very small bone okay this is the summarization of this uh, technique and uh, this is my final uh, presentation as regard the review of literature. If we have time, Professor Muhammad, I have only uh, 10 minutes. For of course, sir, we have time. Of course, sir. We will be great, sir. Okay, sir. I, I, uh, I will escape. And then uh, screen sharing will stop. Okay. And share screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, uh, sorry for, uh, but this is a very difficult uh, problem, as we know, for all the orthopedics and parents. But uh, I will demonstrate not for uh, nothing more than uh, only one paper described the uh, treatment of very resistant cases. But before I should mention to my junior staff, what is the difference between different definitions of untreated treated cases. The untreated case is untreated case, all clafit that uh, not seek the medical advice from uh, pairs up to two years of age. The treated case is a treated clafoot and received treatment and reached full correction. The recurrent clafoot is the foot which reached or achieved good result with treatment but the deformity is regained or returned back after full correction. And neglected case is the club foot in a child aged more than two years with no or little treatment has been performed. Okay? The complex foot deformity is any foot deformity, not club foot only, associated with additional pathology or scarring, either from complication from treatment or surgical intervention. And the resistant one, which I will demonstrate now, is a club foot where treatment has been correctly performed, but the foot show no significant improvement. This is the resistant case of club foot. This is the paper I just mentioned now, is uh, he, uh, some problems for us and uh, I think he puts the solution. The treatment of neglected or relapsed club feet age five year plus is a challenging task. Yes, of course, particularly in our developing countries. And most children can afford surgical procedures which are expensive, like an Elizaro. True. Next. And this is the excessive soft tissue release in such a condition both problems were in the skin approximation, in the wound healing, in the scarring post-operative, in the persistence of some element of deformity because we could not achieve full correction of the element of the deformity. And also this condition or treatment option need long hospital stay. These are limited resources for treatment of such condition. Also, he shipped to another bony procedure. The conventional one could not cause the foot fully. The triple arthrodesis associated with the stiffness and should not be done except after 10 years of age. Telectomy 
associated with high incidence of hind foot recurrence, pain, bony ankylosis in the T tarsal joint. Wow. All procedures are difficult. All procedures are associated with complication. Also, the non-compliance for the subsequent casting had a high drop out rate. Uh, also, casting tendo achillostomotomy will not sufficient. What he did? He did this osteotomy. This an osteotomy located at the apex of the deformity of the foot. And he put two transverse lines with the beige on the dorsum and the apex at the bottom. And he take the wedge as much as he can to achieve fully corrected foot. Where? In the cuboid bone and the 324. If it is not corrected, can he shift distally or proximally? Yes, he can shift up to the tarsal bones or shift to the talus to remove part of it to fully to achieve this food correction. Look, this is a very resistant complex food deformity. And this is the skin incision over the apex of the deformity. And he removed the wedge as we see in the figure and then return as uh, restoring as much here as he can from uh, the, to correct this deformity. Now, rapidly, this is some cases. This is a case with caves, equinus, skin crease on the dorsolateral aspect of the foot, treated conservatively, and the, and the equinus is very severe. After tendo Achilles, you can see in the lower figures that there is a scar of previous tendo Achilles. But this tendo Achilles with repeated manipulation could not achieve full correction of the equinus. This another problem in some severe equinus cases. You may see the foot in line with the leg. What we can do? But all elements are corrected. And the child is too young. So I did step, step by step tendo Achilles procedure. I did tendo Achilles twice, one time to a maximum, and then next time to achieve the fully correction as we see. So this child may need, as in the uh, total hip replacement for infected cases, you have to do step one or step two uh, to achieve the achievement we saw in the bottom. The another one, another example is this congenital severe food deformity, as we see, and we did for her post remedial release. That's a good decision, wise decision, I think, yes. Another one, yes. Look for the food during walking. You see, you see, you see the boy, he's coming, with this figure and this walking. You look, what is our decision? Yes. We do, we decide to do full correction by complete post media release as we see. Okay? But this child, We did for the right side complete post to media release, and on the left side, we did the Lizarov, as I <laughs> mentioned before. And this is the final situation of the boy. This is before. Okay. You can see him is walking on the dorsum of the foot. And this after follow up. I think on the left side with the residual adduction of the forefoot is the case is the, the foot treated by Elizar. <laughs> okay. Another example. This is simple by soft tissue release. Sorry for, uh, I, I take a longer time, but I need to finish. And this is another example show you that the original circle procedure give and achieve full correction of the foot. And this is the baby.
is start, she is starting to walk at this time. She's the first time to walk. Okay, this is the ugly scar with the previous operation. And uh, give me a challenge to do uh, skin uh, Z, Z incision and take longer time, actually. And this is after uh, full correction. Last one. This is an example of the tibialis anterior transfer. So, at the end, we summarize our notes that we must obtain or do our maximum to achieve the plantigrade functional foot at the time of treatment with surgical or conservative treatment. Finally, uh, many thanks to Professor Mohammed Al Ajhab and the faculty and the, of the organizing committee of this Banha seminar and course is very beneficial. I think uh, well done, uh, uh, well organized. Uh, you did a lot of effort for achieving that. Inshallah, uh, حاجة كويسة وصادقة جارية وبشكر كتاني مرة الوجودي وست أستاذ الدكتور خميس وأستاذ الدكتور أسامة وأرجو إن أنا ما كنتش طولت وشكرا جزيلا لحضرتك. شكرا جزيلا. شكرا جزيلا. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our beloved. Professor, Professor Nabil Abdelmani, and thank you. Stazna, Dr. Osama Mawgood. Thank you so much. Father Stazna, Father Teresa. Dr. Nabil, I'm one of the pioneers of the treatment. Thank you very much. I thank you very much. It was a beautiful conversation. And God will forgive you, Dr. Nabil. And God will always be with you. And God will always be with you. I'm very proud of you, Dr. Khamis, Dr. Mohammed, and as long as we have been here, we have been here. يعني ده شرف لينا وانا سعيد بتواجدي معاك حضرتك النهارده. لا بنشكر حضرتك يا فندم على الاليجنت ليكتشر وكنا بنستاذن حضرتك نبدا الاسئله مع حضرتك. اتفضل يا هو بس اول سؤال في سؤال لحضرتك بالنسبه للميتاترسس ادكتس هو لو عيان عنده من اربع لخمس سنين في حد بيسال هو في تشانس فور ويكلي كاستنج؟ ايه ستيل اني تشانس فور ويكلي كاستنج ات ايج فور فايف ييرز زي ما احنا اتفقنا وي هاف درجات او جريدز اوف ذا ديفورميتي احنا هنريتيرن على فكره كله بقى بيرجع دلوقتي ايفن حتى في المايلد كيسز ايرسبكتبل تو ذا ايج لو مايلد كيس بوت هيم ان كاست ات ويل كوركت اوكي بس بشرط ان ما يكونش حصل سكندري بوني تشينجز اوكي لكن بيفور فور ييرز اعمل تيشو بروسيدر زي ما انت عايز في المودر تو سيفير كيسز اللي هي كابسولوتومي بوني بروسيدرز ما فيش حل اكتر انك انت ما تعملهاش قبل سن خمس سنين بلس يبقى المايل كيس من الدرس الدكتس وقبل اربع سنين تراي انك تعمل مانيبيليشن وكاستنج مودريت وسيفير لا شيفت تو سيرج اربع سنين ماينس سوفت تيشو فور اربع سنين بلس بوني اوبريشن تمام يا فندم هو اخونا دكتور اسماعيل بيسال حضرتك هو اولا بيوجه الشكر لحضرتك على المحاضره الرائعه وبيسال حضرتك هو كان عنده حاله سيفير كيفس وعمل لها بونسيتي وعمل لها تيلوتوني واتحسنت والعيان كان عنده سنتين بس طبعا حصل ريلابس بعدها والسيفير كيفس فهو بيسال حضرتك ان هو يعمل بونسيتي تاني ولا يعمل بلانتر فاشيا ريليز هو العيان دلوقتي عنده اربع سنين اوكي نمبر 1 هو uh, اللي هو بقى الاسال بتاعه لازم الاول كان يقول لنا هو عمل مينتننس للكوركشن بتاعه ولا لا؟ يعني هو, هو عمل هو كان حاطط العيان في دينيس براون اه دينيس براون فور تو ييرز يبقى ماشي تمام طب ايه سبب الريكارنس بتاع كيفس؟ اذا كان الراجل عمل مانيبيليشن كويس وعمل مينتننس لدينيس براون ومفروض ان هو ماشي كومبيانس وماشي كويس رجعت ليه؟ يبقى وكمان ان اللي عنده ايديوباسي يعني ما عندوش اي حاجه ثانيه ما خلي بالك الكارنت كيس دي يبقى ليها باثولوجي ثاني خالص يا سموث فاذا كان هو ايديوباسيك لا فيري رير ان هي ترجع وخصوصا مع ان هو ماشي على الريجن بتاع تريد مظبوط لكن لو رجعت يبقى لازم يسيرش فور اذر بوسيبيليتي او اسوشيتد باثولوجي موجود عمل هذا الكلام هنرجع لنفس الموضوع الايج بتاع فور ييرز ده هل هو يكمل؟ يس yes. اديله ترايل على حسب الجريب بتاعتها 
ما جاتش استنى عليه شويه لان الكي بس از فيري ديفيكالت تو كوركت ايزو اي ده هي بلانتر فاشيا ريليز اه طبعا ما فيش مشكله لكن يدي له ترايل ده الاجابه يدي له يس ترايل بعد ما يدور بعد زمان يا حمود تمام يا فندم صمين. بعد ما يدور اذا ما كانش فيه اسوشيتد باثولوجي سبب هذا الكيس تمام يا فندم okay. فضل في في سؤال لحضرتك من زميلنا دكتور عمرو بيسال فرنش. حضرتك عن الفرنش مانيبوليشن اوكي طيب أز... انا انا يعني كمان هستعين باساتذتي هو التكنيك بتاع الفرنش انا مش مذاكره لكن الفرنش اصلا الفرنساويين بيعملوا ايه على حسب معلوماتي هم ما بيعملوش مانيبوليشن وكاستنج هم بيبعتوا موست اوف ذيم لبتوع الفيزيو ثيرابي هم اللي يعملوا مانيبوليشن وبعدين يعملوا ده مش فرنش تكنيك ده اي حد بتاع اطفال حتى بتاع بيدياتريك جنرال بيدياتريك مش اورثوبيدك بيدياتريك اورثوبيدك سيرجن هيبعت بتاع الفيزيو ثيرابي اعمل يا عم وانت مش هتشوف حاجه وبتاع الفيزيو ثيرابي ولا دارس ميكانكس ولا دارس فيسيولوجي واناتومي زيك عشان يقدر يعمل هذا الكلام صح يا دكتور خميس؟ انا معاك يا نبيل هو يعني هو طبعا ال ال يعني ال ال يعني هو زي ما حضرتك تفضلت الفرنش ميثود هي كده هنري بنساهل كان بيبعت فعلا العيانين وبعدين بعد كده يعني ما عندوش ثقه كتيره قوي في بونسيتي اعتقد كان في بينهم وبين بعض كده سوء تفاهم يعني ولا ايه فما كانش بيحب المانيبوليشن بتاعته وكانوا بيعالجوها بعد اذا كانش كده بقى يتصرف يعمل حاجات ثانيه بس انا نفسي نفسي اسال حضرتك سؤال اعتبارك يعني اندلجت جامد في الـ في التركو وبوسترو ميديا ريليس هتقول لنا حضرتك بتعمل البوسترو ميديا الانسيجن الظريف ده وهل هل في اثناء الريليس دو يو ريليس ذا انتر اسيس تيلو كالكينيا ليجمنت ولا لا؟ حاضر شكرا بيب اولا شكرا حضرتك على الدوكيومنتيشن بتاعت الفريش تكنيك دي وبونسيت لكن في التركو البروبلم في الباثولوجي بتاع كلاب فوت ان البوسترو لاترال ستراكشر يا دوبي بتبقى فيري تايت والانتر اوسيس تيلو كالكينيا ليجمنت بيبقى سام تايمز اوبستكل ليه ان احنا نعمل ريبوزيشننج للتيلس على الكالكينيس فيو شود ريليز لو هي مش كوركت معاك علشان ما تبقاش هيتروجينيك كومبليكيشن دي نمبر 1 الحاجه الثانيه بقى التي اللي واحنا بنعملها لما بفتحها طبعا انا كده بفك البتاع ما فيش حاجه ماسكه في التيلس اصلا آه. غير من فوق بقى الديب بارت بتاع الديلتويد ليجمنت وشويه بوستيرو تيلو تيبيال وشويه حاجات فيري فيري سمول فلازم حاجتين اولا هي بتديني ادفانتج ان انا اوصل لللاترال ستراكشر من هنا انا بعمل ريليز لللاترال سبتيلر وبوصل للشيز بتاع البرونيل لدرجه ان انا طبعا محتاجه بقى يعني حر... يعني مش هقول حرفانه لكن ان حضرتك ابقى واخد بالي وانا داخل ان انا بريليز ال 10 لغايه ما اشوف الوايت ستراكشر بتاع البرونيوي وبعدين بعد ما بعمل ريبوزيشننج انا الشود دي من ضمن الانديكيشن اللي في اي اي لازم تسبلمنت الريبوزيشننج بتاعك بتيلو كالكينيا تي واي فروم ذا هيل ما يعديش الانكل عشان هيعمل سلافنج في السكين يعور الريفزز ريفزيا جروس بليت فبعد ما اعمل ريبوزيشننج واعمل ريليز للانتر اوسيس تيلو كالكينيا لازم احط كي واير سبلمنتري لغايه ما اتشيف الفول كوريكشن في ناس بتدعي انك انت لما تعمل ريليس للتيلو كالكينيا انتر اوسيس ليجمنت يو ار جوبارديزنج ذا بلاد سبلاي اوف ذا تيلس ويتش از كامينج فروم ذا ثرو ذيس ليجمنت تو ذا تيلس ما راي حضرتك؟ لوجيك يا بيك بس ماكاي اللي هو اصلا ديسكرايب هذا التكنيك وعمل يعني زي سكتش كده على العلب البوكسز وقعد يبوزيشننج عملها وتعامل دراسات على الفاسكولاريتي بتاعت هذا الكلام ووجد ان نسبه حدوث الايتروجينيك فاسكولار نيكروزيس اوف ذا تيلس نتيجه لجوبرايزنج اوف ذا بلاد سبلاي اوف ذا تيلس نوت مور ذان 10% لان بيحصل نمبر 1 في اذر سورس اوف ذا بلاستر لاي ليها نمبر 2 الحاجه اللي سبحان الله الـ الـ زي زي الفيرسز بيحصل فيه باسترايزيشن وي دونت نو فروم وير 
<تصفيق> هو هو بس يعني انا عايز اطمنك يا دكتور نبيل بيه ان احنا في اسكندريه كان عندنا رساله كنت انا مشرف عليها عملنا لكل الحق كنا بنعمل ريليس فعلا للتيليكول كان انتر اسس ليجمنت في كل الحالات وبعدين بعد كده كان within 3 months كنا بنعمل للعيانين دول ام ار اي كنت انا بدفع نص التكلفه آه. والكانديديت يدفع نص الثاني. نون اوف ذيس كيسز ديفلوب اي في ان اوف ذا تيلز فيعني بنعملها وانت مستريح من جدا. غير ما تخاف ولا من غير حتى ما كان ما يقول لا ما هو مك... لا ده انا بقول ايه على الليتريتشر ايه ان هو 10% آه. لو حصل لهم آه. وعلى فكره آه. ومش عارف هل هي من الريليز ولا من yes. حاجه ثانيه من مانيبيليشن وي دونت يو ار يو ار رايت انا اولا سعيد بمحاضرتك يا نبيل والله و... ويعني مش عارف نفسي كده كل شهر ولا حاجه اقول انا محاضره وانت محاضره عشان اشوفك واسمعك يعني يا بيه ربنا يخليك يا رب يا دكتور خميس انا اللي ربنا يخليك يا نبيل انا اتعلمت من حضرتك يا بيه والله يعني كل مش عايز اقول على الاودينس لكن يعني آه. حضرتك استاذ الاساتذه و... بارك الله فيك اه والله يا بيه ولن انسى فضل حضرتك علينا بيرسون حضرتك عارف <تصفيق> بلاش بقى طب بلاش بقى سنة 2009 بيه عشان بس ايه بلاش بقى بلاش بلاش يا نبيل بلاش والدكتور اسامه طبعا اصدروا على حبيبي اول من اول 93 دكتور اسامه بس عشان برضه الاودينس والناس تعرف ريليشن ما بين الاساتذه وان التايم فاكتور ده مهم ان مهما بيعدي الزمن انا تشرفت ان الدكتور اسامه سنة 93 ناقشني في رسالة ماجستيري وان الدكتور خميس الديب 2009 كان واحد من المحكمين في البيبرز بتاعه تاريخ الاستاذ بتاعي. وطبعا كان عضو لجنه الدكتور اسامه ده تاريخ انا مش عارف الناس كلها بتسمعه ليه بس لازم اقولها بيه ده شرف ليا. يا بيه كلك ذوق يعني انت انسان محترم يعني. ربنا يخليك يا بيه. ميرسي. دكتور محمود في اسئله اخرى؟ هو بس في زميلنا في الاخر بيسال هو ليه اساتذه مصر ما يتجمعوش ويعملوا الجوريزم اور سيرتيفايد بروتوكول فور ديبيتابل توبكس في البيرسز ديزيز هو طبعا دكتور خميس عاملين بروتوكول في اسكندريه لمصر كلها يعني الدكتور خميس اقوى بروتوكول يعني <تصفيق> <تصفيق> لا 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 العفو لا العفو لا بلاش تحايز بلاش تحايز يا محمد يعني لا العفو يا فندم لا شوف يعني هو احنا بنعرضه ويعني يعني بنرحب باي نوع من التعديلات ونخليه باسم مصر كلها بقى يعني يعني دكتور خميس بي سعادتك يعني. سعادتك انا هفكر حضرتك بس لما كنا في الايبوس لما كنا في سكولنت في ايطاليا وسعادتك بيرثس حضرتك قمت من هنا كله سكت خلاص يعني دكتور خميس دي الام خلاص لا لا ده لا لا ابو ال في العالم يعني فلو تفتكر سعادتك لما كنا في ايطاليا مع بعض في فندم آه ممكن اقول تعليق صغير على الكومنت اللي قلته يا دكتور محمود بعد اذنك اتفضل يا فندم برضه عشان حق الحق يذكر يعني كان في من ضمن الاجتماعات زمان كده في اجتماعات مجموعه جراحه العظام الاطفال اللي هي تابعه لجمعيه جراحه العظام المصريه كان فيها اساتذتنا طبعا ورحمه الله عليه الدكتور نبيل خليفه وكنا الدكتور اسامه كان قال ان احنا عايزين نعمل آه زي حاجه عارف انت البرشامه حاجه كده زي الجوريزم للتريتمنت لكل حاجه يعني جه سوبرا كوندايلا فراكشر هيومرس يتعمل اللي يتعمل بروتوكول للتريتمنت من اول عين يمشي ويمشي يبقى ستاندردايزد على كل حاجه انا اعتقد ان احنا ما شاء الله الاساتذه كتير والعلم كبير لكن ربنا يعدي الغمه دي بس والناس كلها تبقى تتجمع واعتقد ان الكلام ده هو اللي هيبقى الفيوتشر ان يبقى في دايما جايد لاينز لكل حاجه تتعمل جايد لاينز بتاعت اسكندريه دي ريفرنس خلي بالك وجايد لاينز اه طبعا يا بيه وجايد لاينز دكتور اسامه في حاجات كتير وجايد لاينز عندنا شمس الناس اخرين وجايد لاينز حضرتك دكتور محمد الاشهب وفي كتير قوي لو جمعت كلها عايزه ايفورت كبير جدا بس حد يبقى ليدر يجمع الناس تمام 